Hello everyone. It's uh, November 26th, 2013. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Sorry, it's been a little bit of while, a little bit of time since I did a Harp Tuesday episode, but um, here we have one today. And this was inspired by a question that I saw on a Harp email list asking about uh, Bach's uh, prelude number one from the Well-Tempered Clavier, the prelude in C, you know, the... This is something, of course, I did that episode on uh, the Bach Guno Ave Maria, where, where I, I played both parts and you could play either part along with me, virtual duet. Um, but her question was, could uh, were there any arrangements for the um, lever harp, could she play it on the lever harp? And, and I thought, well, probably, but it might take a little bit of work. And I got thinking about that some more, thinking about that some more, and thought, hey, why don't I do an episode talking about how you would go about trying to arrange this for the lever harp? So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you're going to see me do it sort of in real time. I'm going to, it's like half an hour or something as I go through. I have the, the piano music, you know, the original music, uh, public domain from Mutopia. You can download it as well. I, there should be a link coming up here and also on the about page of this, this YouTube video. And you're going to see me go through it and, and talk about what, I, what I'm doing as, as I'm looking through there. And I thought I would just briefly talk about a few things to think about when you're dealing with accidentals and levers on the, on the lever harp. And one of them is that sometimes, of course, it can actually be an advantage on the lever harp over the pedal harp because you can set individual strings. In other words, if I want an F sharp here and an F natural here, and you know, the rest of the time everything is F natural, but maybe the only time I ever play the string, I want it as an F sharp. Well, I can just set that lever ahead of time and forget about it. Whereas on the pedal harp, you know, I will have to change from an F natural to an F sharp, I'll have to make that pedal change. Um, so that can be an advantage. And in this piece, for example, it turns out that this low A here, you can set it to A flat because the only time we ever play it, we need an A flat. Cool, so that's, you know, one change we don't even have to do because we we can just leave it there. Um, and, and then just this, this is sort of like a puzzle, same thing with the pedal harp in terms of, okay, Sometimes it's really easy. You know, we got lots of time to change this. There's one individual lever and lots of time to change it back. And maybe that's it. There's that one accident on the whole piece. Perfect. We don't really, you know, sit down and work through it. Just, we can just sight read it fairly, fairly easily. But once you start to deal with, with some more chromatic stuff in here, we, you know, we have a number of lever changes going on. It becomes this little puzzle where you say, okay, I can maybe do this lever change here. But when do I need to change it back? And what do I have coming up? And can I do this here? And, and oops, I don't have time here. And maybe I have to change this one lever that doesn't happen. You know, it happens here. Maybe I have to change it like five bars beforehand because I got other stuff going on. I won't have a chance to change it. And it just becomes kind of a, kind of a fun puzzle sometimes to, to figure things out. And, and also, and harmonics, they've come more into play on the pedal harp because you basically anharmonics talk about the way a note is written. In other words, on the piano, it doesn't matter whether you write a note as an A flat or a G sharp. You're just going to play that black key right in between the A and the G uh, white keys. And it's going to be that sound, whether you call it an A flat or a G sharp, it's the same sound, same pitch. Um, but of course on the harp, it matters because they're different strings and you know, I'm tuned to E flat with all the levers down. So right now I'm tuned to C with the three levers up and I can get a G sharp and I can get an A flat. They sound the same. So if I come across in a piece, a need for a, either a G sharp or an A flat, I always have the option of doing the other. This one calls for some A flats. I could play those A flats as G sharps and harmonically in other words. Um, and sometimes that enharmonic thinking will allow you to solve a particularly difficult puzzle. 
Um, I, I do one spot, bar 22, I use a D sharp instead of an E flat. It doesn't, it, it, if you listen through the whole video, it doesn't necessarily, I think it's possible we could do it as an a, E flat as well. Um, but I kind of like, it, it, it's, it's not one of these, aha, it beautifully solves the puzzle, but I think it does make it a little bit easier to, to do that and harmonic spelling there. So as I, as I mentioned in the video with this tuning of E flat, there's only two enharmonics that we have. We have the G sharp and the A flat, and we have the uh, D sharp and the E flat. So we don't have a whole bunch of options we have to think about, but it is something just to be aware of and different tunings will give you different, uh, the, the person who first, first posted this question was tuned to uh, F. So then you would have, you know, when you could get an A sharp, because here's your, your A is going to be natural when it's down, and that's going to be equal to your B flat. So you have the, that option of those two strings sounding the same. Um, and uh, obviously you can get then an E sharp and an F natural. Um, again, another enharmonic. So being aware of enharmonics and puzzling things out, trying to, here, this goes here, this goes there. But anyway, take a look at the longer video and, and watch me go through this if you're interested. And I also have the, not a nicely typeset version, but I've got a scan of this um, with, my, with my writing on it. Um, if, if you're looking for a lever harp arrangement of Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier, Prelude number one. Um, yeah. So hope you enjoy this and uh, I will see you soon. Cheers.